Smile, Britt. Breathe. No, don't look at me. I'm just. <laughs> no, I'm smiling. It's metal shaped yeah. in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep my mouth as shut as possible. <laughs> That's a first. Ooh, I am on a roll. <laughs> true dual rate lift kit, which Kevin and I chose to put on our Jeep specifically because A, it's kind of their entry level. You can actually go one step lower and go without the Rock Sport shocks if you'd like. Uh, we did get the Rock Sport Edition. We wanted the new shocks. Either way, it's kind of their most affordable entry level lift kit, which is why Kevin and I chose it. We may choose to upgrade down the line, but for now, I think this is perfect for what we're looking for. In this kit, you specifically have your rear and front coil springs. Again, we got the Rock Sport Edition, so we have the new shocks. You have all your adjustable bump stops. You also have your end links. These are your shock relocation brackets. You also have your pan hard adjustable front and rear bars and your front upper control arms as well to adjust caster. It's pretty basic. It shouldn't take us too terribly long to get these installed. Granted, we have a lift, which is amazing. We also have a couple of extra hands courtesy of Jason and Metal Cook. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, it's gonna be the drive shaft. Yeah, we probably should have thought about that before we put the skids on. Yeah. <laughs> Brought out the bigger guns. So since we have so many hands available, we have Jason here working on the rear, which the rear just gets the coils, the shocks, and that pan hard. But we're also, while we have the convenience of this lift, which who knows, we may not have it in the future, we're also gonna go ahead and take that sway bar in the rear and flip it around to make sure we don't have any clearance problems if we ever choose to upgrade the lift down the line. And while he is doing that, We've got Kevin up here who is going to go ahead and change the yoke out for the front drive shaft. We're just gonna change the yoke out first and then we can actually put the drive shaft in later which is what we'll probably do this time around. So Jason here has the uh, rear sway bar completely disconnected so pull it down literally just flip it over and back up and what that does is it helps with any clearance issues so we figure while we've again got the lift might as well take care of it now so we're struggling with the uh, front yoke on the drive shaft we called in the cavalry <laughs> got it so this bad boy here is getting replaced with that right there Woo! all right and that is how you do that Check it out. So that right there is what we just replaced, and that's what the new drive shaft will be bolting into. But again, we're gonna save that until later. We're gonna do the front suspension first, that way we can lower that entire front axle, makes it a lot easier. Then we'll bolt up the uh, drive shaft when we're done. So we're gonna reuse the rubber isolators. These are the old stock springs, and these are the new ones for the rear. Jay. I'll let you do the honors. <laughs> All right. Nailed it. Nailed it. What are you doing, Britt? I am adjusting the new rear track bar because if you look, so. Basically, as you raise the Jeep higher, the whole axle shifts this way.
So we've got just about all the components on the rear that we need. We've got the shocks, the springs, the end links, and the track bar. We've got the track bar pre-measured out to 37 and three quarters, which is what Metal Club told us was about the base. Obviously, you're not gonna see exactly how that settles until you get the vehicle on the ground. So we've got everything bolted, tightened down, and then once we get on the ground, we can go from there. But before we set it down, we're gonna go ahead and start with the front. Now the front suspension, it gets, of course, springs and shocks as well. It also gets the shock relocation brackets and the upper control arms. With the track bar on the front and the adjustable upper control arms, we went ahead and preset their measurements just like we did with the rear. The front track bar, we set at 34 and a half inches and the upper control arms, we set at about 19 and three quarters. Again, we won't know exactly what that puts us at until we get it settled. But with the upper control arms, the goal is to get us at about six degrees of caster. We'll go ahead and get started on that. And again, drive shaft will probably be the last thing we put in before we button her up and set her down. Let's go. So here's a good visual of the factory shock, fully extended, and the rock sport shock, fully extended. Do you need my tiny hands to get the top shock bolt off? No, or on? Just to get the little spacer back there. So oh man, here, let's try my tiny hands. Ah! Victory! Yeah? So, good job. as important as it is to have beefy dudes around, sometimes it helps to have a girl around with dainty hands. Or a tiny guy with dainty hands, that works too. Perfect. Okay. Nailed it. Nailed it. All right, so we are almost done. All we have left is the front track bar and the front drive shaft. The only downside is, is for the front track bar, we do have to widen out this hole down here on the bottom, if you can see it, just so that the metal cloak one fits properly. There we go. Unfortunately, we've run out of time today, so we'll have to pick up first thing in the morning. But after that, all we've got to do is set the Jeep down, make sure all of our measurements are right on the track bars and those upper control arms, and then we should be good to go and ready to hit the Rubicon Trail. Ah. All right, it's a brand new day and we are back at Metal Cloak. We have a couple things left and then we'll be completely done installing the new lift. We'll be able to put it on the ground, and make sure everything's good to go. Right now, we've got to take care of the front track bar make sure that we can get it to fit. And so we've got Jason over here uninstalling this front shock. So we've got this bad boy out. And that way we can get down in here and we can hollow out this a little bit more. That way the new metal clip track bar fits in there perfectly. Hold on, let's, <laughs> what's, what, what's wrong here? Um. See if you can tell me which of these do not <laughs> Stand back, woman with the power tool. You watch yourself, or else I'm gonna give you something to stand for him and whatever. I was gonna say something. You were trying to be clever and you just, uh, get, get back to work. <laughs> All right, so we've got the track bar fitting now. Before we put up that side, we're gonna put in the front drive shaft. Woo! So we've got the drive shaft bolts completely torqued down front and rear. And all that is left is attaching this half of the track bar. But before we do that, we're gonna put it on the ground because that'll make lining this up with this way easier, being able to steer with load on it. And then we'll check caster. That's it. And then we'll be done. This is awesome. Check it out. It looks so cool. So many gold shiny bits. All that zinc. All that zinc. All right, so we have the caster set to about six degrees in the front. We've got the front track bar set. 
So all that's left now is the steering wheel, getting that straightened out, and then jump into the rear track bar. Almost done. Okay, so not only has Metal Cloak been insanely awesome this entire time, we've got the skid plates on, we've got the lift on, we also had a helping hand in installing all of it, but they're also letting us use their ramp to CTI the Jeep now that we've got their three and a half inch dual rate true lift kit on it. All right, let's see how it does. officially have Metal Cloak's true dual rate three and a half inch lift with the Rock Sport shocks installed on our JL and Kevin was not joking. This rides better than it did stock. It does. It's so comfortable. Like we haven't been slowing down for any of the bumps. We're just testing it out. And I mean, obviously we're just on roads and highway right now, but it's super comfy over these bumps. I really thought it was going to be a lot stiffer of a ride. We love the tire pressure the same. We haven't changed anything haven't else, changed anything. Just, just the skids in the lift kit. Yeah, we were expecting like a little less comfort, yeah. way more comfort. Yeah. Obviously, you're also worried, you know, when you lift up a vehicle that you're gonna have a lot more sort of sway as far as like your steering or your handling goes. It's no different than it was two days ago. Yeah, holy crap, this is awesome. Absolutely, after five minutes of driving, 120% in love with this Metal Club lift gonna definitely test out those skid plates as well on the Rubicon tomorrow you guys just have to stay tuned but anyways please don't forget to like subscribe and share thank you for watching so much as always we love you and we'll see you next time Bye. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go.